What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Terraform backend using AWS S3 and DynamoDB. Now, if you clicked on this video, I assume that you probably already understand what a Terraform backend is and why we need it. However, just in case you don't, let me start off by giving a brief explanation on, you know, what is Terraform backends and why we need them. Now, if you've ever deployed anything through Terraform, you'll notice that uh, as soon as you deploy something, Terraform creates this terraform.tf state file. And this is how Terraform manages its state. So this state file is going to keep track of all of the resources that you've deployed onto AWS or any of your other cloud providers using Terraform. And Terraform needs to have this information so that if you later on down the road decide to either delete a resource or modify a resource, it needs to know what resource to actually delete or modify. And so it's going to keep track of all of the information regarding each and every resource you've deployed. And you'll see that I created a simple AWS database instance, and you'll see all the information that it's going to keep track of within this state file. Uh, so you can see that we've got the ID here. So anytime we need to make a API call to AWS, it's going to have the ID so that it can make that call accordingly. Now, as I explained to you guys how state works in Terraform, I'm sure some of you guys are already thinking about some of the limitations of having a state file on our local machines, right? And the first and obvious issue is, uh, you know, if we have team members or coworkers or colleagues that need to have access to our Terraform configs and code, and they want to deploy resources uh, using the same Terraform files, right? Um, because if they need to use our Terraform configs and code, right, they need access to our Terraform state. However, our Terraform state is stored on our local machine. Uh, so this means that most likely we would have to make sure that when we upload our Terraform config files and, and all of our Terraform code, we also upload all of our Terraform state files into a GitHub repository so that everyone has access to it. And for the most part, that will work, but that'll lead to some issues as well. Uh, and these can be some serious drawbacks. Uh, one of the main issues with storing your Terraform state within a GitHub repository is, uh, let's say your coworker downloads your Terraform code and they also you know, download or, or do a git pull on your code as well as your Terraform state. And let's say they create a few EC2 instances in AWS. And then let's say they only remember to push your main, your Terraform files and they forget to push the Terraform state. Well, then now the Terraform state file within our GitHub repository is out of date and not in sync with all the resources that are, that are deployed onto AWS. And that is one of the risks of storing your state within a GitHub repository. You need to make sure that all of your employees are diligent about making sure that they update the state file within GitHub. The second major concern is that there's no locking mechanism on state. Whether you store, uh, you know, when you store your state within GitHub, uh, this leads to an issue of what if two employees try to deploy resources at the same time? This can lead to a corrupt Terraform state. We always want to make sure that only one user can deploy a resource at a given time. And then finally, uh, you'll see that Terraform, when we uh, store our state in, in that state file, and you know if we push it up to GitHub, Terraform actually stores all of the credentials, usernames, and passwords uh, that we use to deploy resources all in a plain text file. So uh, as an example, let me quickly show you guys this. Um, but I've deployed this uh, database instance, and I've passed in a password right here, which is hard-coded in the file, but Let's say I didn't actually hard code it into uh, this file right here and I used a variable or an environment variable so I couldn't see it. Well, it doesn't matter if I use a variable here because when I go to the state file, no matter what, when you go to the password field, it's going to have it written out in plain text um, because it needs to keep track of all of that information as a plain state object uh, within the state file. So when you, store this, uh, when you store your state file in a GitHub repository, now all of your employees have access to all of your credentials. Uh, and that's another limitation of Terraform state. So with all these concerns in mind, it's best not to store your state file uh, within GitHub, but to actually use a Terraform backend. And uh, a Terraform backend really just determines how Terraform loads and stores state. And Terraform does use a default backend at all times, and the default backend is a local backend, which is what we've been using till now. So when you use a local backend, right, we're storing our state as a file on our local machine. So that is what a local backend is. However, uh, there is something that's referred to as a remote backend, which allows us to store our state file uh, on a remote shared store so that uh, you know, your coworkers and colleagues uh, all can access the same state. Uh, and you know, when you set up a proper remote backend, it's going to make sure that we don't run into a lot of the issues that I mentioned 
Uh, it's going to provide some sort of locking mechanism so that only one user can make changes at a given time. And there's a lot of different backends, uh, including using some of the common storage services like using Amazon S3 or Azure Storage or Google's equivalent. Uh, and even Terraform themselves have a built-in service for managing Terraform backend. Um, but I'm going to show you guys how to set up a backend using AWS S3. To set up an S3 Terraform backend, there's a couple of steps that we need to perform. And the first thing is creating an S3 bucket that's going to store our state file. Because remember, our state is just nothing more than a text file. So we could store it in an S3 bucket like we would with any other file. And if you guys don't know how to create an S3 bucket within uh, through Terraform, I recommend you uh, just go to the documentation. So if you just Google S3 bucket, it's going to show you how to create an S3 bucket. And I'm going to tell you the exact parameters that we need to set to ensure that S3 has been configured properly for a Terraform backend. Okay, so let's define our resource. We're going to do resource. This is going to be an AWS S3 bucket. And feel free to give it, uh, you know, whatever name you want. I'm just going to call this Terraform underscore state. Okay, so now we have to give our bucket a name. And remember, this name has to be globally unique, so make sure you don't grab a name that someone else is using. I'm going to call this Terraform State dash Sanjeev. Pretty sure no one's going to be using that. Okay, then the next property that we have to define is the lifecycle property. So we need to ensure that we don't accidentally delete this bucket, right? Because if we delete our bucket, then we're going to delete our entire state. And all it takes is one employee to accidentally do a Terraform destroy on this file, and then we lose all of our state. So what we can do is do a prevent underscore destroy and set that equal to true. So if anyone tries to delete our bucket through Terraform, Terraform is going to throw an error um, because it's going to say that, hey, you're not allowed to delete this, right? You have to manually go in and delete this if you do actually want to delete it. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to enable versioning. Uh, this is just because with when you're working with state uh, and you're working with Terraform, you want to make sure that you have a, a versioning set up for your state so that if you actually make any breaking changes, you can always see what the state was at a previous moment in time. So we're going to set that enabled equals to true. And then lastly, the, um, the last thing that we have to do is we want to make sure that when we store this file on AWS, that the file is encrypted. And that's just because we're storing our passwords and things like that. So just to be on the safe side, we want to make sure that it's actually encrypted. So we do server underscore side encryption underscore configuration. And then we do rule. Okay, so that block of configs is going to ensure that when we store our state file on AWS, it's going to be uh, encrypted. Uh, so after we've configured our S3 bucket, the next thing we need to do uh, is set up our locking mechanism so that only one user can make changes at a given time. And we're going to be doing that using a DynamoDB table. So uh, if you don't know what DynamoDB is, that's Amazon's NoSQL service. So we can use that to perform locking. And once again, if you don't uh, understand any of the configs that I'm I'm entering in here, uh, I've, I've had the link for the DynamoDB table for uh, Terraform. So you can just take a look at this real quick just to understand what are the different fields and parameters I'm passing in. All right, so let's give this guy a name. I'm just going to call this uh, Terraform dash state uh, dash locking. Oops. Uh, we're going to set the billing mode to uh, pay per request. And guys, this is important. We have to set the hash key, and you want to make sure you set this to the exact name that I'm giving, and you have to make sure that it's capitalized accordingly. So we want to do capital L, O, C, K, and then ID. And then finally, we want to give it an attribute. So we'll do name equals, and then we'll do lock ID again, and then type equals S, capital S. Okay, so this is it, guys. 
Uh, so we've configured an S3 bucket. We've set the DynamoDB table. Uh, now the last thing that we have to do is actually configure Terraform to use the S3 bucket as the back end. And I recommend you go to the documentation once again. So um, this is the page you want to go to, and this is going to show you how to set up a uh, S3 backend. And uh, I'm trying to find a good example. Let's see, where is it? Uh, so this is, so I think this one right here. Uh, no, not that. Let's see if I can find it. I thought they gave an example here, um, oh, or a full example. I don't think they did. Um, but this is the basic configuration. You do Terraform. You say the backend is going to be S3. Then you specify the bucket that you're going to be using. So that's the S3 bucket that we just configured. Uh, the key, so the key um, is going to be the actual uh, folder path within your bucket on where you want to store the state file. And then, uh, you know, you can pass in the region as well as any other fields that you'd like. Uh, we're going to be passing in a few extra fields and that's going to be for the DynamoDB table that we're going to use for locking. So let's set that up. I'm just going to put this at the top. doesn't really matter where you put it, but I like to always put it at the top. Uh, so we're going to do backend S3. And now we're going to do the bucket. And we want to make sure that we copy the bucket name that we specified right here. So we'll copy this. We want to make sure it's the exact same name. Now the key that I'm giving. So uh, this is the folder or directory that we're going to store our state file. Uh, you can pick whatever path you, you want to use. But I'm going to use global uh, S3. And then we're going to call this uh, Terraform dot tf state and i'll explain in a few seconds or uh, in a bit why i used uh why i decided to choose this path um all right and then uh next we need to specify the region so this is uh us east one for me that's where i'm deploying everything if you're using a different region uh, make sure to update that accordingly uh, then we have to give it the uh, dynamo db table that we created. So we want to grab the name under the DynamoDB table, which is this one right here. And then finally, we want to make sure that encrypt is set to true. So we're going to encrypt everything. All right. And so if you guys, um, if you try to deploy this right now, you'll see that it will not actually work. And we can do that. So if you do a Terraform, I'll make sure I save this. If you do a Terraform apply, so a couple of things uh, are needed when you want to change the back end. So even though I've already run Terraform in it when I first uh, deployed my uh, my database instance, whenever you change the Terraform back end, you need to do a Terraform in it one more time because Terraform in it not only downloads all the necessary modules, it also sets up the back end. So since we're moving to an S3 back end, we need to do another Terraform in it. So that Terraform knows that we want to use the S3 backend. All right, and when we do a Terraform in it, you'll see that it throws an error and it says that there is no such bucket. Um, and we gave it a bucket name of uh, this right here, right? It says that there's no such bucket. And that's because, uh, think about it, guys, we actually haven't done a Terraform apply to create this bucket. So when we try to do a Terraform in it, it has no idea that this bucket exists because it doesn't because we haven't ran the code. So what we need to do is it's a little annoying because uh, to manage state, we actually have to create um, a S3 bucket with our local state before we can use the remote state. So what we have to do is just comment this guy out, save this, and we want to do a Terraform apply so that we can deploy the S3 bucket. It'll get deployed into our local state. That's not a problem. And then only after the S3 bucket has been deployed can we then move to a S3 backend. And it looks like uh, I messed up the configs. So let's see. Oh, I put a U right there. All right, now if I run this, what happened here? Once again, another typo. And oh, all of this is wrong. Encrypt. And there we go. All right, so it's been deployed. Uh, if we go to our dashboard, we want to go into. Uh, S3. And you should see that we now have a Terraform, oh, sorry, we have a new S3 bucket uh, that was given the name that I specified within our Terraform code. Nothing's in there at the moment, um, but once we initialize our backend, uh, you'll then start to see the file that we are going to create using this key.
And we also did deploy the uh, DynamoDB lock mechanism, um, but don't worry about looking at that. Just know that it'll work. Uh, so let's uncomment this and save that. And let's do a Terraform in it. And you should get a warning basically saying that um, you know, you're currently using local state and you want to move to a S3 backend. So you just have to type in yes to confirm. All right. And at this point, Terraform, uh, the, the backend has successfully been deployed. Uh, and if you go to our Terraform state file, you'll notice that there's nothing in there now. And that's because all of our Terraform state has moved to our remote backend. So let's go to our uh, bucket. Let me refresh this. Okay, and you'll see that that folder global got created, right? Because if I go back to uh, the key, this is the full path of where I'm going to store the file. So it's going to go into a folder called global, and then a folder called S3, and then it's going to store it in a file called terraform.tf state. So I click that, click that. You can see that this is where our Terraform state file resides. And we can click on this and we can actually open it and just take a look at our Terraform state, right? So it's the same thing that we had locally, but now it's just being stored in uh, S3. Okay, guys, so we've successfully created a Terraform backend using S3. Um, however, later down the road, if you decide that you want to just, you know, get rid of everything, you want to delete your infrastructure, um, because we're using a Terraform backend uh, with S3, there's a couple of steps that we actually have to perform. Um, because if we try to do a Terraform destroy right now, it's not going to work because our backend is using an S3. And if we destroy our, our S3, uh, then, the, then the backend doesn't know what to reference. So there's, it actually becomes a two-step process. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to remove our backend configs, right? So we can either comment it out or we can target it and destroy it. Um, but I'm just going to comment it out and then just do a Terraform apply or sorry, a Terraform. Yeah, let's just do a Terraform apply. And you'll see that it throws another error saying that, oh, look, you're changing uh, your backend settings from an S3 back to local. You need to do a Terraform in it. So let's do a Terraform in it. Type in yes. And after you do that, you should see the Terraform TF state file uh, is now populated again with all of our state. And so we've now moved back to local state. And at this point, we can now delete all of our resources like we normally would. So we can do a Terraform destroy, or we can comment everything out and do a Terraform apply. All right, guys. So that's all I had for this video. Uh, if you guys still have any questions regarding Terraform backends or anything like that, uh, feel free to ask them in the comments, and I'll try to do my best to answer them.